like size seems to be so important right now. Like girls have asked me to send dick pics before the first date. I'm like, what am I getting pre-approved for a loan or something right now? One girl asked to send my asked me to send my dick next to a water bottle for scale. Look how big water bottles are now. Good thing I always bring a spare, though. You know what I'm saying, everyone? Yeah. Oh, I gotta say, hey, these women today, man. You gotta say, hey. <laughs> but if I really want to impress her, I bring out this pea shooter right here, dude. Yeah, what the fuck, yeah. This is custom made in Taiwan, motherfucker. <laughs> That's, that's vodka in this bitch, goddammit. <laughs> I mean, I guess I have a low self-esteem with dating, man. I, I don't know, this city does it to you a little bit. Like, people talk about white supremacy. You know what they don't talk about? Height supremacy. There's girls on the app, they say if you're under six feet, you might as well be, or uh, if you're under six feet, need not apply. Do you know what I hear? Height power. <laughs> They're saying if you're under six feet, you might as well be six feet under, motherfucker. There's a study that came out of Yale in 2022, I swear to God, that for every inch that a dude is under five foot nine, he has to make an additional $40,000 a year to be as attractive as the next. By that math, I have $320,000 in debt right now, bro. And then I swear to God, okay, if you go on Google, type in, why are tall men? It fills in the blanks. It says, so attractive. I hopped out of my booster seat. I said, what the fuck is going on here, man? And then I, I type in, I start type in, why are short men? You want to know what it says? So angry. <laughs> it's okay. You don't need to boo. You can laugh at my pain. If you want to awe, you can fuck me later. <laughs> oh, man. You want to make a man feel like a king, you know what you do. Give some king some head, you know what I'm saying, boys? <laughs> hey, D-Lo, how you doing over there, D-Lo? Good to see you. Um, uh, that was smooth, you see that? Oh, holy shit, dude. Dude, the first, so the first time, uh, I dated a lot of different people out here in Los Angeles. That's the best part of it. But <laughs> the first time I ever went out with a black girl was here in LA and I was really intimidated. So I went to my buddy Darnell for some advice. <laughs> Darnell is Asian, by the way, so I don't know what you're laughing at over there. All right, just kidding, Darnell was black, okay? He got me. But he honestly, true story, he said, he gave me three things. He said, Adam, you need to have weed, you need to have Hennessy, and don't touch her hair. I said, easy enough. So I brought her back to my apartment. She sees a big bag of weed, blunt wraps, and a Costco-sized Hennessy bottle waiting for her on my coffee table. She thought that I was racist as fuck, man. She ran to the bathroom and she called her friend and she said, I knew this dude was a cop. It dawned on me in that moment that I just made the most prejudiced charcuterie board. <laughs> <laughs> and like I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to find love. I'm a simple soul. My, like, I was the shortest kid in my high school, and my mom tried to give me advice. Like, <laughs> she was like, Adam, don't be sad. Like, there's always gonna be someone taller, someone smarter, someone funnier, someone better looking. I'm like, Mom, can you shut the fuck up before I kill myself? You're worse than the bully. <laughs> Yeah, like for real, Jesus Christ. And like, man, like she just turned 60 years old and uh, she confided in me too, cause I guess she's, she lives alone now and she's back on the, out on the streets trying to find love. And she's like, Adam, I just, after I turned 60, I just don't feel as sexy as I used to. Like, I'm just not worried about a man following me back to my car at night. I'm like, oh, that's so sad. So, for her 61st birthday, I'm thinking about hiring a guy. <laughs> just, 
you know, just to wait outside of Bed Bath & Beyond and make her feel young again, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> nothing crazy, all right, nothing crazy. I'm not trying to make her feel 16 or nothing, you know what I mean? But just like a guy to post up and say, hey, Lori, nice ass, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I just want to get that blood pressure medication working, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and she's from the Midwest, and things move a little bit slower out in the Midwest. Like, my ex was non-binary. And the hardest part about dating someone non-binary was explaining to my Midwestern parents what non-binary means. I said, Mom, they are non-binary. She said, do they not know how to read or write? What does that mean? I'm like, no, Mom. It means they are neither a man nor a woman. She said, Adam, it sounds like they don't exist. <laughs> you already had a fake girlfriend in high school. We've been over this already. <laughs> and the word, like, the, one of the worst parts about it is like when you're in a non-binary relationship, we call each other partners. I had to say it, partners. I'm like, do we have to call each, do we have to call each other partners in front of my dad? He thought that we were starting a law firm together, bro. <laughs> and like, I heard a conversation like after dinner they had in the other room. And my dad was like, Lori, what the fuck? Adam's a partner? <laughs> and my mom said, God damn it, Todd, get with the times. Adam is a lesbian now, and you better respect that. <laughs> oh, God damn. I've been single too long. I've been single too long. But I mean, I, but I do, I do have a controversial opinion about dating right now. I think black men are dating too many white women at the moment. <laughs> give me a chance, give me a chance. I'm saying this because black women have started to come on to me. Now. <laughs> I'm the polar opposite of a strong black man. <laughs> I'm a feeble Jewish boy. <laughs> so, to the black man in the room, consider me the canary in the coal mine. Tweet, tweet, motherfuckers. <laughs> tweet, tweet. But to the white guys in the room, like you over there, <laughs> good news. When it chocolate rains, it chocolate pours, baby. <laughs> I, was, I, I was hooking up with a black girl six months ago, and she blew my mind, because she said, you better get ready. Because this ain't no white girl pussy. <laughs> I told her, no, you better get ready. <laughs> Cause this ain't no black guy dick. <laughs> on God too, man, on God, bro. <laughs> I thought I did well though too, cause the next morning she texted me and she said, man, you really filled me up. And then two minutes later she said, oops, wrong number. <laughs> I still screenshotted that shit though, I swear to God I did. I sent that to my mom and I said, look what you and dad did, baby, we made it. <laughs> and now she's out here on the comedy streets telling people that she hooked up with the white Easy e <laughs> It's like straight out of Compton, like how oh, it's straight out of like Connecticut, bitch. You know? <laughs> Holy fuck, man, yeah. So now I'm out here watching porn all the time. You want to know, oh yeah. you want to know something I just realized today? It's like, people say you are what you uh, eat, but I think you are what porn you watch. Because <laughs> I, this is totally off the cuff, but I, I watched a lot of midget porn when I was 12, and now look at me, goddamn. <laughs> but you know what porn I get tired of? I'm tired of all, like, I like my porn real. Like, I, like, I don't like that shit that's in 4K fake boobs, fake lighting, fake acting. You know, I like that nitty gritty. That's why my favorite porn category is mature amateur. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it sounds like you're about to make one tonight. It sounds like. <laughs> All right, we got a mature amateur head in here. Uh, yeah, cause uh, mature amateur is the best. You know, it's real cause it's couples they're old couples that make home sex tapes together. And so it's couples that really know how to fuck, but who really don't know how to use a camera. <laughs> I was watching the hottest sex tape, man. It was 45 minutes long of the, of they were banging their hearts out, but they left the lens cap still on the goddamn camera. 
So it was like the most awesome ASMR experience I've ever had. And you had to listen, like I knew it was a, I knew it was a white couple, cause they had Fox News playing in the background. <laughs> But anyways, bro, honestly, I really appreciate this crowd. I appreciate this crowd. Because, like, it's hard to, like, tell different kind of jokes, especially race jokes. I live in Silver Lake. And, like, sometimes... <laughs> a lot of Trader Joe white people in Silver Lake, man. A lot of Trader Joes. And sometimes, like, I swear, I've had people come up to me, they, they, like, they're like, Adam, you can't say those race jokes like that. You're not black. And you're definitely not cool enough to have black friends. I'm like, what, what do I need to have, proof or something? <sighs> I said, read it and weep, bitch. <laughs> oh my God. These are the top six of my very best black friends. <laughs> and if there's any Silver Lake Trader Joe white people in here at the moment, and D-Lo's right there. That's D-Lo, that's right. Give it up for D-Lo, everybody. <laughs> still doesn't believe me, signature's on the back. All right, motherfucker. All right, thank you guys. I appreciate that. That's Give it up for Terrence, everybody. What a great